God so re- revealing that he inspired 40 different authors to write his word down over a period of some 1500 years. Why? So that you and I in a modern world would have a foundation. Come on. Amen. So that we can know his love. So that we can know his heart. So that we could know how to live. And I've got news for you today that morality doesn't change with the times. Thank you, sister. I said morality doesn't change with the times. <laughs> well, some would argue, well, you know, who is, who is, yeah, it, well, no, let me just back up here. Morality doesn't change with the times because Matthew 24, 35 says this. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Well, some would say, well, who is God that he can tell somebody what is right and what is wrong? Let me, you can write this statement down. Authority, authority, absolute authority rests in the one who has it. Absolute authority rests in the one who has it. You bump up against authority when you're just a little kid. Do I got any mamas in the house? How many of y'all ever told your kids no? Hello? How many of you told them what to do, right? You want to know why? Because to that child, you're their absolute authority. Hello, especially when they're little. Come on. And, 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 and let me tell you, it's, it's, it, the world may not like it. People, don't, people may not understand it, but it is so. There is authority in our world today playing the Super Bowl. I'm sure that at one point, one of those coaches is going to tell one of those players, I'm sorry, you're done for the day. Out you go and in you go. Guess what? That guy can't say, oh, wait a minute, this is the Super Bowl, man. I want to play in the Super Bowl. This is my big opportunity. He's not going to do it, is he? You want to know why? Because the coach has the authority to pull him out. Come on. If a police officer pulls you over and tells you, please step out of your vehicle, let me tell you, I've got a little encouragement for you. Go ahead and do it. Hello. Why? Because the police officer has, has authority. If the principal of your son's school states something, you may not like his or her decision, but guess what? They have authority in that area. If you go to work, your employer has authority, and it, it may be difficult, but come on. You've got to realize that there's such a thing as authority. And so the question becomes this. How many of you tracking with me today? Who is the absolute authority in the universe? The ultimate authority is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, how do we know that? Because Matthew 28 and verse 28 says this. And Jesus came and spoke to them. These are in red letters in your Bibles. Come on. It says, all authority some authority. What does it say? All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. I'm just telling you that Jesus is the ultimate authority. Come on. That's why the scripture says don't fear those who can put your body in harm and, and kill the body. But rather have fear for the one that can very even cast your soul into hell. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the final judge. He's the ultimate authority. That's why the word says that every single knee is going to bow. And every Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Come on, can we give a shout for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? He's the ultimate authority in this universe. And we're His children. Woo! Hallelujah. So we as Christians, we've got to conclude. I hope I'm convincing you. I'm giving you arguments today. I'm hoping to convince you that there is an absolute moral authority and truth in this world. But I've got another question. How did our society ever sink to this place? Huh? How did Satan deceive our generation into believing that there is no absolute truth? And I want to tell you something. Our world is in a moral mess. And where there's things happening that are immoral, 
Let me tell you what I've observed, that there's a lot of pain, that there's a lot of hurt, that there's a lot of grief, that there's a lot of tears, that there's a lot of sorrows, that there's a lot of brokenness that happens in our world. And, and then you say, well, pastor, that's just humanity. Yes, it is. It's humanity. But humanity has taken one other step in saying there is no authority. There is no truth. I can do whatever I want. And let me tell you something, that kind of an attitude does nothing but harm those that are around you. To have a witness in the house, can I get a hand of praise today for the king? Because this is the truth that I'm preaching to you today. How did we get here? How did we get here where there's so many broken relationships? How did we get here where there's such crying in beds at night? How did we get here? I wonder what happened. Let me tell you, this generation has been caught up like all generations have since the garden. We've been caught up in a spiritual battle against the very forces of darkness. And I tell you that there's a lot of people that are deceived. They've bought into a pack of lies. They think they understand the world around them. But I'll tell you they are simply uh, following the wicked Pied Piper as he plays a tune to lead them away from truth. And we need to understand and identify who that Pied Piper is. It is none other than Satan himself. He is the opposite of God. If God is truth, he's a liar. Tell your neighbor the devil is a liar. John 8, says this, He, speaking of Satan, does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. Another version says, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of it. So let me just give you a few strategies that he's employed against humanity. I want us to be aware of this today. Come on. How many of you know the word says that we are not unaware of his devices? Come on. The enemy has devices, and this is what he's using, my friend, on your grandchildren, on your children, on your neighbors, on the people that you work with to lead them astray. Here's what he does. Number one, he made mankind, including our families, if he can, including this generation, he's made mankind doubt the goodness of God. He, they, we, they doubt the goodness of God. You got to go way back to the very beginning, all right? There was only one rule in the garden, right? Don't eat the fruit of the tree. That's it. Don't touch that fruit. And then her conversation with the serpent in the garden. Eve mentioned that rule. She said, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, a lie? You won't die. You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Let me tell you what Satan was doing. Satan was casting doubt on the goodness of God. It was the goodness of God that said, if you eat of that tree, you're going to die. But let me tell you, the, 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 the woman listened to the enemy. She listened to the serpent who said, no, you're not going to die. In fact, you want to eat of that tree because it's going to make you like God. It's a good thing. Go ahead. And so in a desire to become wise, like the scripture said, she ate of the fruit. She denied the goodness of God. Let me tell you something. Satan is casting doubt on the goodness of God still today. You can take any issue of morality that there is. And the enemy will, tell, will try to spin a web of lies to tell you that somehow God is not good by keeping that thing from you. That you can get away with it. It's not going to hurt anybody. But it's all right. You don't need to believe what the Bible says. You know, it's old fashioned. This is 2020. It doesn't really matter. He's just trying to raise on your parade. And the enemy will tell you these words. He'll say, do whatever you want. It's okay. That's a lie. It's not okay to do whatever you want. Did you know, my friend, that that is absolutely those that phrase, do whatever you want. That is what Satanists say. But you know what Satanists say? They got to put it in the King James Version because they're trying to imitate anything that's good, right? And with their evilness. But they say, do what thou wilt. <laughs> do what thou wilt. I'm here to tell you that God is good, His book is good. 
His word is good. His morality is good. His way of living is good. His love is good. I've got a Baptist pastor, a good friend of mine, born again, loves the Lord. And this is what he says. He says, the majority of believers in today's world, they are convinced that Jesus is the best way and even the only way to get to heaven. And I believe that. A lot of people believe Jesus is the one way. He's the only way. But this is what he also says. But most believers today are not thoroughly convinced that living the way Jesus lived and the way the Word tells you to live is the very best way to live. Come on, somebody. And what, and you say, well, why is that? It's because they doubt the goodness of God. Let me tell you something. God is good. And He wants you to enjoy life and happiness and joy and joy in Christ and be able to lay your head down on the bed and have peace at night. Come on, don't doubt the goodness of God. And then let me tell you what else He does. Not only does He want you to doubt God's goodness, but He wants you to be able to laugh at sinful things. One of His favorite tactics is that He uses is to get us to laugh at things because that makes it a little bit more acceptable. How many of y'all watch Andy Griffith? That's my wife's favorite program. <laughs> She's saying no, but she likes to watch that. And we all know who Otis is, right? How many know Otis? He's the comedy relief on the Andy Griffith show. Am I right? And we laugh at Otis. He's kind of a funny fellow. But really, if you look a little bit deeper, he's not funny. It's kind of sad and pathetic. And if Otis were a real person, which he's not, hello, come on. We're not going to have any of that weirdness go on. We're not going to have any prayer requests for Otis today. Otis doesn't exist, okay? All right? But let me tell you something. Otis needs Jesus, Hello? Hello, but you see, the enemy wants you to get you to laugh at stuff that really isn't that funny. That's why, and I don't apologize for this, the majority of comedians in our world are way too nasty for Christians to listen to. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you what else he does. He changes the meanings of words over time. He gets you to doubt the goodness of God, gets you to laugh at things that are sinful, and he also changes the meaning of words over time. I've got a book in my library, and I keep it only to remind me uh, that when I see the, the, the title of it, uh, you know, of this author and the wickedness that this author had. Because at the back of the book, there's a whole list of definitions of biblical words that this author has the audacity to change all the definitions of about 10 different words in order to make her point come across. And she has the audacity to put that in the back of her book. And when I found that in the back of her book, you don't want to know what I said. How dare you? How dare you change the meanings of words? Let me tell you, but Satan is doing that all the time. He'll change the meanings of words. All right, love used to be a word that meant a lifelong commitment to someone, right? Love is standing by your spouse in sickness and in health, in poverty or wealth, and for better or for worse, until death do you part. But today, what does love mean? Love means a mushy, gushy emotion, right? A romantic feeling, a sexual desire. Satan's changing the meaning of words. Marriage used to mean a covenant relationship ordained by God in which a man and woman entered into a sexual union and family until death. Today, marriage simply means a contract between any two or more consenting adults who live together as long as they want to and practice whatever form of commitment that they choose to. How dare the enemy change the meaning of words? You know why he's doing it? Because he wants people to think it's normal. Now, I'm really going to show my, show my age today, all right? I'm going to say, tell your neighbor it's all right for pastor to be old. Tell him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell him it's all right. He's got gray hair. He could be old. This going to surprise. Who's, who's under 20? Wave at me. All the 25-year-olds. Okay, under 30. Some are young at heart. 